your heads with me. Our Father and our God, we come here in your presence this morning with joy and thanksgiving, Father. We acknowledge your presence here in this room today, Lord. We're praying, Father, that as we lift up our voices in song, as we lift up our hearts, Lord, that you will accept our worship, that you will accept our praises in the name of Jesus. The whole church said, Amen. Church, as you're standing and have your hymnals in hand, we're singing hymn number 612, Onward Christian Soldiers.
Good morning, good morning, good morning. No, 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 no. We're not having that. This is Sabbath. We are here to see the King of Kings and Lord of Lords. The sun is shining. I mean, I don't hear that. Aren't you happy to be alive? Have another day? Now, we're going to try that again. Good morning, good morning, good morning. Oh, that sounds so much better. Because I want you to sound good because we got visitors here. And we want, you know, we don't want them to say, well, what's wrong with these folks? I'm getting ready to welcome them. And they say, yeah, I'm nobody wants to hear that. Nobody wants to hear that. So now that I got you straight, let me turn my attention to my visitors. We're so happy to have all our guests this morning. And, and in case you don't know what guest means, I know y'all tired of hearing me say this, but guest means you do not have membership here. You may come here all the time, but until your membership, you're a guest. You know, my children are guests in my home anymore now that I've kicked them out. They're there all the time, but they're still guests. So, I am always happy to greet guests, and it is my pleasure, my privilege this morning to greet our guest. So every guest that's here this morning, would you please stand? I know, I, I don't want to embarrass you, but we want to take a good look at you. There we go. That's what we like to see. All our guests, have mercy. It's so good to see you. On behalf of the pastoral staff and the members, we're just thrilled to have you here with us today. We, we want to get to know you and, 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 and at least get to shake your hand. So I can't get to all of you. But what I'm going to have to do is I'm going to have my other friends, my other family members, get up, greet you, welcome you, as well as each other. And once again, it's just good to have you with you. Welcome and happy Sabbath.
what a joy divine laying on the everlast what a blessedness what a peace is mine laying on the everlasting everybody we are together give God the praise this morning. Amen, 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 and amen. It's good to be in the house of the Lord today, is it not? It's good to be in the house of the Lord today, is it not? If you're happy and you know it, put your hands together, give God the praise. He's wonderful, marvelous, and greatly to be praised. I'm glad to be here. Good to see each and every one of you. My Heavenly Father's children, welcome, 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 ever welcome into this, his house of praise, prayer, and worship. Uh, we're going to thank God for a week, another week, but as we look forward to a new week, we're going to re be reminded that on Tuesday, what do we do, everybody? What do we do? We power up. A church that prays together stays together, huh? And we are praying and asking God's continued blessings upon us. We are asking for miracles and breakthroughs. I need to let you know that there are miracles that are needed in this house today. Somebody else say amen. We need some miracles in this house right here and right now. What I'm glad to tell you is that we've got a God who is still never been out of business Never close the door. Never. Have you ever gone to a store that says, listen, uh, we'll be back later, gone. We're out to lunch. Jesus is never out to lunch. You never get a sign on his door, we'll be back at 2.30, it's 10 o'clock in the morning. He's always on the throne, ready, able, and available to attend to our needs. Um, and within a week, actually a week from this Monday, the DuPont Park Adventist School, the school with the, oh, come on, come on, come on. The DuPont Park Adventist School, the school with the eternal advantage will open its doors for the 2018-2019 school year. Somebody say amen. amen. It's school time all over again. And we want to pray for our school and the students as they prepare for the first day of school on our Power Up Tuesday. Is that all right? We want to bathe and cover this ministry in prayer. And I think that date is the, uh, August the 20th. They will be in school, and we want to pray now that the parents who have committed to bringing their children are able to do so, that God will bless them financially, bless them with their commitment of sacrifice, bless our students, bless our wonderful staff, our teachers, the entire, our principal, everybody. We want God's covering upon them. We're going to do that together, amen? amen. Praying every hour on the hour from the time we rise until... 12 noon. If you feel like you've got the Holy Ghost power and you want to keep on praying, can I tell you something? You can keep on praying all day long, every hour on the hour as we're fasting and prayer. And then on Wednesday, on Wednesday, we have Wednesday Connect at 12 noon and at 7 o'clock p.m. We are now in a new series, still on prayer. We're still on prayer. I can't give it up. I can't give it up not going to give it up. 
We're still on prayer. This month, we're talking about prayer warriors, prayer warriors. There are examples in the Word of God of people who are champions for God and with God through their praying. This past Wednesday, we talked about Moses as a prayer warrior, a intercessory prayer warrior. You ought to review and look at his life again. This week, the lesson is in your bulletin. We're talking about Esther. We don't want to just talk about men. There are some women who are prayer warriors. Somebody ought to say amen. There are women in God's body who are prayer warriors. We're going to talk about Esther. Following that, the following week, we will look at the life of Paul and his prayer life, perhaps one of the greatest apostles of the New Testament time, greatest preacher of all except Jesus Christ. And then we're going to end with the only prayer warrior we could end with. Ah, somebody said it. Jesus, who is the greatest prayer warrior. You can come and be with us each night and in September, letting you know now because some were confused, in September we will have our joint prayer meeting small groups on Tuesday evening beginning in September and you will see that day. Still we will be focusing on prayer and the, and the, um, and the, and the um, theme will be when the church prays. When the church Praise. You don't want to miss it. I hope you are planning to be here with us during that time. I want to um, uh, let you know that on this coming Thursday, August the 16th, 2018, at 11 o'clock a.m., we will have the memorial services for Brother Daryl Colbert. This will take place at the Sligo Seventh-day Adventist Church Youth Room, the Sligo Seventh day Adventist Church Youth Room. Brother Colbert was the brother of Sister Gail Jackson, who passed on last week, and those the service will take place this Thursday, 11 o'clock a.m., Sligo Youth Room, um, right uh, there in Tacoma Park, Maryland. We're asking that you continue to keep the family in prayer and, and bless them with your presence if you are available. You have seen in the bulletin as well that uh, we have the sad news of announcing that Brother Samuel Mosley, the, wife, the husband of Sister Liberta Mosley, the father to Gwen and Linda and Clarence, uh, died this past Thursday. We don't have any arrangements as of yet, but please keep the family in prayer. Will we do that? Can we do that? Keep the family in prayer. Remember all of those who are still dealing with bereavement. Just because the service is over doesn't mean that the heart has been healed. The heart has been healed. So please keep them all in prayer. Arlene is away uh, visiting her father. Her father was sick for so long. I uh, ended up having a, a leg amputation. Uh, he is a, um, this was a couple of years ago. And before then, um, Dad was a, um, is an ordained Church of God pastor. Hasn't preached in several years. She got the word this weekend that Dad was going to preach his first sermon in several years. So she took off to go support her daddy. You know them daddy girls, you can't, hey, 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 hey. Ain't no need to be talking about where you going. Hey, that ain't happening. That's not happening. She got to go see Daddy. God bless you. The youngest boy, uh, Freddie, went with her, and so she sends her greetings. The Mukorum Bindos, the Mukorum Bindos, I think they still have us in their mind and heart. They're over in Europe. Uh, Pastor Mukorum Bindo told me he's going to go by and see the Vatican. I said, don't come back here all messed up, boy. <laughs> We'll snatch credentials, boy. You better come back here straight. <laughs> but we're praying for their traveling mercies and glad that they're able to have this time of respite and relaxation and being able to go and rest for a while, especially Sister Leanne has had a long journey. And uh, we're just praying for them. But they also send their prayers and their love and their greetings. I just want to say another word of thank you. Arlene put it in the bulletin to the ladies who responded last week to the cleaning call for our preschool building 
uh, last week. Come on, church, say amen. I think it was an army of about eight of them who came, and they scrubbed and scrubbed, and they cleaned, and they cleaned, and our building for our young ones looks much, much, much better. And we continue to thank uh, Brother Clarence Mosley and the team and all who have been helping to get our school back where it belongs. And now we want to take a moment to celebrate Christian service. Is that all right? This year we had a, a very good vacation Bible school. A full staff of committed individuals who were dressed in character, carried out their roles to the fullest. Um, they were there every day with our children. But programs and events usually rest upon the shoulders of good leadership. Everything rises and falls on leadership. That's what Maxwell says. And we are blessed and thankful to have a marvelous, fantastic, just energetic, vibrant, creative, committed, anointed children's ministry leader who led out in this process and I'm going to ask the Vacation Bible School leaders and team to come at this time. They wanted to say something special all to all the team members, all team members, all team members. If you worked in Vacation Bible School and you were in costume. All behind the scenes. Yes, everybody. We want to celebrate Dr. Kathleen Christopher. She's such a humble person. The only thing I can say is when you have a strong leader, you have a strong staff. And I did not realize it, but Kathleen had just recently gotten out the hospital. And this is the cook, bottle washer, planner and everything else and so it was all of our joy to be a part of your presentation today and we honor you we praise you may the lord ever bless you and what you do <laughs> praise the lord church this was my first year working with vacation bible school i took off for the week and it was such a joy Kathleen and I sit in the same pew and we talk to each other throughout the service, but it was an absolute joy to work with, under Kathleen, to witness her leadership, her genuine love and care and concern for every single person that was involved in this ministry. You are blessed beyond measure. I speak life into you in everything that you do. And ask God to continue to bless you and keep you as only he can. And these are just a little, little tokens of appreciation for you. That's one. All of from all of us standing here. And, 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 and these are other things too. Just know that you are loved beyond measure. Thank you guys so much. Um, uh, a leader is only as good as his team, and you guys are absolutely awesome. And I'm not saying that lightly. Um, they were, they just did everything that was expected and beyond. I really, really appreciate you. I did not expect all of this, but thank you so much, and continue to keep me in prayer. Love you guys. Amen. Come on, put your hands together. Come on, come on, celebrate. Right before Brother Bailey comes, I want to take time to um, recognize those who celebrated a birthday this week or maybe even today. If you're here and this was a birthday season for you, why don't you just stand right where you are? Birthday celebrants, birthday celebrants, birthday, birthdays. All right, all right. What's wrong with y'all? Why y'all so slow? The Lord blessed you with life. Get on up. Amen. Well, I mean, ah, birthday as well. 
listen, God bless each and every one of you. We thank God for what, what he has done, how he has touched you and smiled upon you, giving you yet another year of life. On the count of three, one, two, three, happy birthday. And may you have many, 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 many more days of prosperity and health. And now we want to celebrate our wedding anniversaries. Wedding anniversaries. Ah. So we let them Freemans get, look, look at this. <laughs> yes, Lord. <laughs> Brother Sister Freeman, God bless you. Uh, we can tell by the smiles on your faces that all is well. How many years? Four short? All right, that's good. It's better than four long years. That's beautiful. That's beautiful. Four years. Well, we praise God for the happiness and the joy he's brought into your life through your marriage. May he continue to smile upon you, breathe upon you, and bless you with many, many, many more happy years together. On the count of three, one, two, three, happy anniversary. All right, all right, all right. She took a couple of more seconds with all that walking she did over there towards you. I, I thought, well, God bless you. Amen. 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 Brother Lamont Baylor, come on up. Church family here to talk with you about what we collectively did on July 28th at our back to school bash. It was not uh, personal ministry or inner city coordinating ministry. It was the entire church family. You gathered together uh, by uh, donating enough equip, uh, donating enough school supplies to create 250 plus back to school bags. Uh, And that's not the end of it. We still have equi uh, supplies probably for 30 more bags, 25 to 30 more bags that we will be organizing for distribution. Now, we, we packed um, and distributed bags. We had a total of 250 bags. Um, we distributed on the 28th. Uh, 197 of those bags so that means we that means we have 53 bags remaining and some of you have uh, come and called or gotten in contact with me and asked for a bag for your loved one and um, I asked you to please hold on because what I did on the 20, on the 30th, which was that Monday, I got in contact with a social service agency right up here in Fairfax Village. They are responsible for providing training, workforce development, which is what we have done also, but they're responsible for providing workforce development to recipients of TANF. Uh, now, in case you didn't know, TANF is, um, the acronym TANF stands for Temporary Assistance for Needy Families. So we're teaming with KRA, that's the, re that's the social service agency. We're teaming with them to identify 53 candidates in their organization that will need school supplies. Now we did the school supplies for the community and we wanted to make sure that we got the supplies that were even left over out into the community. And so that's what we'll be doing on August 15th. We will be providing those supplies to the community. As a result of the people that we touched by doing the back to school campaign we gathered 63 names of contacts and telephone numbers and 
email addresses that we will follow up with as we do with each activity that we do. Uh, the activity that we'll do on uh, August the 15th for those 53 bags, there will be 53 names. The, the uh, KRA has taken the responsibility of getting the information for those cards and passing that on to us. And so God blessed us with this outreach activity. Now, this is what I want to say, church family. Everybody didn't bring a, uh, bring, a, bring a bag of school supplies, but that's okay because some of you that didn't bring school supplies, you put a financial contribution into the church so that we could do the ministry mission that we did. And, and some of you didn't put money, but you prayed about what we were doing. And so collectively, church family, we did that outreach effort. And there are many more to come. We won't stop until we've touched every home, every home in this community of Ward 7. It's a heavy lift, but by God's grace, we can do it. And I continue to, I'll continue to come to you and I'll, I'll solicit your help. I'll solicit you to help me to put out handbills and I'll, I'll solicit you to, to pray for what we're doing. I'll solicit your help uh, in going out and putting up more smoke, smoke alarms. I'll solicit your help in every ministry activity that we do so we can have an impact on the community outside the four walls of 3985 Massachusetts Avenue. Amen. Blessings to all of you. Good morning, everybody. So just a reminder for tomorrow, we will have the AV training, which will be from 10 a.m. to 1 p.m. Um, with the training, we'll be learning different things like with soundboard, cameras, everything in the back. So tomorrow morning, 10 a.m. to 1 p.m., if you need more details, just look for me after church.
morning, church. It's children's story time. You didn't think I was going to go away, did you? Just because it's summer vacation, I am still coming up here every Sabbath for Christian education. You see these two schools over here? If the children come around with a basket, please put some money in. They're cute little children, but it's for DuPont Park School. It's not a dollar for the cute little child in a basket. It's for the school. This is DuPont Park Church. The school is getting ready to open. You heard Pastor Harris say Power Up Tuesday. Tuesday's our first home and school meeting that night. We're going to pray for DuPont Park School, but put your money in the basket. I usually give you $20. Someone asked me, was I going to reduce it? No, I'm not. It's two tens. I'm still putting in $20 for DuPont Park School. Please join me. Good morning and happy Sabbath. My name is Kyla and I'm 10 years old. And I have a question for you. Does anyone know what an architect is? An architect is a person who plans, designs, and reviews the construction of buildings. You may wonder how an architect does his or her job. Well, an architect has lots of special tools. Some architect tools used when designing buildings include a special ruler, pencil, a protractor, and a compass. And to build a model house like this one you see here today, which I built this week, you will need a ruler, a knife, a glue gun, popsicle sticks, a, pen a pencil, and styrofoam. So to, so to build a house or any building you have, to first design a floor plan. The floor plan shows where everything will be in your house, like where the walls go, where the bedrooms and the bathrooms will be. Most importantly, where the kitchen and refrigerator be, will be. But the other rooms might be in the house. What other rooms might be in the house? Each room or space in the house has a purpose. After you have a floor plan, you need building materials. For my model here, I use styrofoam. To build a real house, I would use brick, concrete, and steel. These are stronger materials to make the house sturdy and able to stand for many years to come to withstand the storms that will surely come. So just as we carefully plan, design, and build our homes, so has, even, so has God even more carefully planned, designed, and created each of us uniquely, wonderfully, and in his own image. Yes, God ha is the master architect. He has a special plan in mind for you and me, long before we was born. His design for each one of our lives is that we will be happy, productive, strong, and capable. 
uniquely fulfilling the special purpose that only you can fulfill. Jeremiah 29 11 says, For I know the plans that I have for you, declares the Lord, plans to prosper you and not to harm you, plans to give you hope in the future. Psalms 139-15 says, Praise you because I am fearfully and wonderfully made. Your works are wonderful. I know that full well. May I peace have a volunteer to pray. For my daddy, my mom cares yourself. God gonna help you. You have to care your. You have to care your family, your mom. Amen. Daddy sees us at the earth. It 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 it. But it got by it. It's as if us is as us. The other end. This I said, he who sowed sparingly will also reap sparingly, and he who sows bountifully will also reap bountifully. So let each one give as he purposes in his heart, not grudgingly or of necessity, for God loves a cheerful giver. And God is able to make all grace abound toward you that you always having all sufficiency in all things may have abundance for every good work. Would the officers please stand and prepare to receive our tithes and offering? Let us pray. Dear Heavenly Father, a couple of weeks ago I heard a pastor say that we thought that you were on the cross dying, but no, you were on the cross paying bills, paying our debt, the debt that we constantly incur day after day through our sin. Lord, we can never repay you, but we ask that you please accept these humble tokens of love that we return unto you. And we ask that you will further give us a more generous spirit in all that we say and do. We ask these things in our most humble and sincere prayer and spirit. Amen.
Since I had another Harley, amen. It's now time to approach once again God's throne of grace. This has been kind of a tough season for so many reasons, even within our church body. And then when challenges strike home, you've got to try to shoulder up even, even more. And so after coming back last week, I went to go see my brother that we've been praying for who had bypass surgery a week ago Friday. I got the word that the surgery went well. There was a complication, but things, things were okay. When Arlene and I got down there uh, Sunday, Monday, I didn't like what I saw. That was not my brother sitting in that bed. His affect, unable to vocalize, unable to hear. For the first time in a long time, I had to feed him. You're talking with the doctors, doctors tell you what they know. They tell you what they see. And what they know and what they saw wasn't good enough for me. I needed somebody who could see better and who knew more. We had to press for certain things, certain tests to take place. But I am happy to say this morning that my brother is on a strong road to recovery. Amen. Got him up, he's walking around. The vocalization is coming back. They thought he had a stroke in the ear. I ain't never know, Gina, I ain't know you could do that. A stroke in the ear? But they think it's just fluid. And so I'm praising God this morning. You know he can do it. Hmm? You know he can do it. But when you're faced with it, when you're faced with it, there's always that lingering voice in the back of your head, and then the enemy comes and says, yeah, you know he can do it, but he might not do it this time. And that's when you got to be like those Hebrew boys. But if not, he's a good God. He's a good God. He's a powerful God. He's a come through God. He's a right now God. And he's available right here, right now. And so I invite you to come with me as we go to the throne. I got to go to the throne. I don't know about you today, but I got to rush to the throne this morning. Talk to my Lord, praise my Lord, and then petition him on behalf of his people, his children, family members, those who are bereaved. And I am reminded again, he will not leave us. He will not. He has not. And we will trust him more and more every day. Be
Let's sing that one more time. I will. I will be with you. I be. Heavenly Father, we believe, we believe, we know that your promises are sure, we believe that you will not leave us, you have not left us, we believe that you are able, that you are willing, but Lord, we want to be honest with you. We believe, but help our unbelief. For in our humanity, Lord, what we know sometimes doesn't line up with what we see. And that's when we've got to lean on what we know. Trust your word. And to know that you are too good, too loving, too kind to make a mistake. And even when the answers don't show up the way we would want them to, you're still an awesome God. Nothing changes with you. You're still powerful, magnificent, holy, and yes, worthy to be praised. So today, we praise you. Magnify your name. We give you the glory and honor because it belongs to you. You are our God and there is no other. You're the God of our early morning rising. You're the God that sets us on our way during the day. You're the God that keeps us throughout the day, brings us back home safely. You're the God that watches over us in the night hours. And then, Lord, because you're faithful, the sun still rises in the east and sets in the west. Because you're faithful, every time our lungs expand and our diaphragm pulls back, we draw in fresh air. Because you're faithful, Lord, there is still blood running warm in our veins. Because you are faithful, Lord, we're able to stand up, walk in our right minds. Because you're faithful, there's still food on the table, clothes on our backs. Lord, the sun is still shining. We thank you for the sunshine and the rain. Because you're faithful. The doors of your house were open this morning, and without obstacles, we were able to come into this place to worship you. We want to say thank you for being a mighty good God. We want to say thank you for seeing about us. Thank you for blessing us in spite of who and what we are. We confess, we confess, we confess. We can't help it. We're messed up, oh God. Yeah, yeah, yeah. There are times that the, the, the desire to be what you would have us to be is there, but our flesh is desperately weak. But praise God, there's a fountain. <laughs> Feel with blood. No matter how many times we dip, it's still filled with blood. Not just anybody's blood, but the precious blood of the Lamb. We're sinners from every walk of life and from every level of brokenness. When they are plunged beneath the flood, they lose all their guilty stains. So thank you for the blood today. Cover us, please, oh God. We confess. Now cover us. Wash us, fix us, 
transform us, renew us, make us over again. If you got to tear us down and start all over again, that's all right with us. We just want to be what you would have us to be and do what you'd have us to do and go where you would have us to go. Give us, give us strength, power, the mind, the desire to resist the evil one. We don't want to keep falling down, rolling around, waddling in the same stuff. Give us victory, oh God. We want to be overcomers. So we claim that even right now, the sin that so easily traps us, loose us, and let us go in the name of Jesus. So, Lord, we draw near to you today. We've come to the altar because we believe you're a prayer hearing, prayer answering God. We stand up. We kneel, Father. We call upon you because, because we know that you are listening all day long. So we come boldly before you, not in our own righteousness, but we're covered in Jesus. And because we're covered in Jesus and because you have invited us to come, we come boldly. The Hebrew writer said, let us boldly come before the one who understands and knows all about it. So, Lord, we want to thank you for the blessings we've seen and we receive this week. I thank you for what you've done for Sean, my brother. I thank you, Lord, for what you've done for Sister Smith. And I thank you, Lord, for what you've done for the families and the members of this church. Thank you. But now, Lord, we draw near right now. Lift up our petitions because we still need miracles in this place. Someone still needs the doors open so that they can find employment. We still need doors open, oh God. There are those who are sick among us right now who need a miracle from you. They need your healing hand. They need your healing touch. Move, oh God. Let the spirit of healing move in this place from person to person. And healed in the name of Jesus. We claim it right now. Lord, I plead for our families. Some, some, Lord, we carry facades and masks, but some on the brink of disaster. Bind up our hearts. Draw us closer together. Husbands and wives, parents and children, siblings, Father. Lord, just draw us together. This church, oh Lord, we need a miracle. We're calling on you to do what only you can do for, with, and through us. Now, Lord, we ask that as we've come together in this place, that you remember the bereaved among us. Remember Sister Jackson and her family. Cover them, O oh God, hold them in the hollow of your hand. Father, lift up the family of Brother Samuel Mosley. Oh, my God, draw near to them. Comfort them, cover them. Yes, we mourn. We mourn. But we don't mourn as those who have no hope. But we still mourn. So cup our tears. Capture our broken hearts. Comfort as only you can. And Lord, for those who are looking, waiting, yearning, hungering to hear the good news of the gospel, who are here today, who are in the community, we pray, Lord, that you will use us from the pulpit to the pew as clarion criers of the good news of Jesus Christ. And whoever we see along the way, we'll let them know Jesus saves. Jesus saves. And may your kingdom be increased. And may your children, your sons and daughter from afar be brought into your house of fellowship and praise. And then, O oh Lord, when time runs out, when you declare it's done, When the rocks begin to dance, 
and the islands begin to run. The earth shakes, heavens roll back, and the dead in Christ rise up. When Jesus comes again, when the trumpet sounds, O oh Lord, our God, save us. Save us, each one into your eternal kingdom. For this we plead and claim. In the name of the Father, in the name of the Son, <laughs> and in the name of the sweet Holy Spirit. Let DuPont Park say together, amen, amen, and amen. church say amen. amen ain't nothing like a talk with Jesus come on stand to your feet as we prepare for the word of the Lord this morning Nothing in my hand I bring, 
is to the cross of my Savior I cling. O oh Lord, let the words of my mouth, the meditation of my heart, be acceptable in your sight. You are my God, you are my strength, you are my redeemer. Speak through the instrument of clay, touch the hearts of these your people. And when we leave this place, may we say, oh, it was good to have been in the house of the Lord. In the mighty name of Jesus, we ask these things and say together, amen, amen, and amen. Please remain standing with me with your Bibles in hand going to the New Testament. The gospel according to Luke, the sixth chapter. Just one verse today. Luke 6 and verse 38. Luke chapter 6 and verse 38 as we continue our preaching theme, Generous on Purpose. Dr. Poole, good to see you this morning as well. Just now catching you. God bless you. Good to see you. Luke chapter 6 beginning with just verse 38. Just verse 38. You have it? Say amen. amen. You have it? Say amen. amen. Come on, give me a strong amen. You have it? Say amen. amen. All right. Let us read together as I'm reading from the New King James Version. There the Bible says, give and it will be given to you. Good measure, pressed down, shaken together, and what everybody? Amen. Running over will be put into your bosom, for with the same measure that you use, it will be measured back to you. For just a few moments this afternoon, I want to speak with you on the subject, the generous mind. The generous mind. God bless you. You may be seated. The generous, what everybody? The generous mind. It's your attitude, your mindset that is critical and key to your generosity. I've come to realize that most of us have what we declare or consider to be a code of life, a set of values, a set of of, of this is what I will do, parameters with which we live our lives. For many, that code of life can be boiled down into this one simple phrase, to get as much as possible for as little as possible. I want to get all I can get, but I don't want to pay a whole lot for what I possess. That's why, perhaps, in bold letters, that word that seems to capture us all is a word called a sale. When we see a sale sign, there's something that quickens in our spirit and our mind. Ladies, don't sit there and look at me like you don't know what I'm talking about because as soon as you see a shoe sale sign, many of you lose your mind and are off to the races. When we see the word sell, it suggests that the thing that we value, the thing that we're holding in esteem is now attainable. It's, it's, it's accessible. We can possess it, not at its market value, but perhaps we can now get it below its market value as much as 50%. Oh, what happens when we see 75% off? Now, that's my kind of sale. We rush and we true try to make sure that we're able to take advantage of the sale because we want to get as much as possible for as little as possible. I am the kind of person I want to get what I pay for. And I, when I pay for it, I want to get all 
of what I pay for. Therefore, when I make that visit, when I make that visit, and one of the things that I still love, and I still love, I don't eat it as much as I, I used to, but I still love crispy, golden, hot French fries. I got to testify to that today. I, 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 I love a good French fry. So, so, so when, I, when I visit the arches, when I go by to see the king, uh, when I visit that uh, uh, little redhead girl and I order some fries, I want every fry that I pay for. <clears throat> If I order a small, give me all of my small fries. If I order a medium, give me all of my medium fries. I'm watching with great concern when I see them over on the side at the fry place and they got that little scoop and they hold my box up and then they start putting fries in it and then start shaking the fries to make sure some fries fall out. I get upset. I got, we got to misunderstand that. Don't be shaking out fries. If it's in the box, leave it in the box. I won't Every fry, every French fry that I pay for. In fact, if I get a box that's limited on fries, I will look in. I, I don't count the fries. I don't count them. But I can see with my eye, there ain't some, there's some fries missing here. I'll give you the benefit of the doubt. I'll check the bottom of the bag first to make sure the fries didn't fall out in the bag. But I'm here to tell you, I'm here to tell you, you hear me, you will never see me on CNN in a news report because of this. But I guarantee you if all my fries are not in that bag. I'm coming back to the counter and with the sweetness of Jesus Christ, Charles, I'm going to ask where the rest of my fries at? <laughs> All my good English goes out the window because you done messed up with my fries. Now, haven't you noticed, haven't you noticed that the quantity and the value have changed. Have you noticed that you are paying more for less? Mm -hmm. uh, when I grew up, Lamont, you could get a big old bag of chips for 10 cents. Not this little bitty bag for $2, but a great big bag for just a dime. Go down to the penny store, the penny store. That's when the penny store was really a penny store. Go down and get you a bag of 10 cookies for a nickel. You can get a big old pickle for a nickel. You can buy a whole lot for a little. I remember when gas was 27 cents a gallon, 32 cents a gallon. But for some reason, we are paying more for less. Our clothes are costing more. Our food is costing more. Our restaurant portions are getting smaller. And even I remember the dramatic shift back, back in the day when you bought a car, when you bought a deuce and a quarter, when you bought a 98, when you bought a Cadillac, you got all of the Cadillac. You got all of that deuce and a quarter. You got all of that 98. In fact, the cars were so big, you could see the hood of the car coming around the corner long before you saw the passenger who was driving. But now they done shrunk your car up and they're still paying, and you're still paying an astronomical amount of money. We are getting less, but we are paying more. When I began to think about all of this and, and look at how values are shifting and changing, I would suggest to you that we are often challenged with being Christ-like when it comes to sharing, giving, and being generous. Oh, don't get quiet on me now. We are challenged with being Christ-like when it comes to being faithful to God in stewardship, not just in tithes and offering, but in everything that stewardship involves. 
Stewardship, stewardship, I'm going to slow down right here. Stewardship involves being generous. In other words, Christians have been called to be generous people. We are called to be good measure, pressed down, shaken together, and running over in our generosity. In fact, Jesus gives us a promise to motivate us to be generous. He says in Luke 6 and 38, give and it will be what? Given to you. Good measure, pressed down, shaken together, and running over will be put in your bosom. For with the same measure that you use, it will be measured back to you. Be, underst be, be clear and understand that there is a conditional peace in this promise. That what we give will also line up with the measurement of what we will be giving. What you share has a direct impact on what you receive. So the focus point, you write this down, and I want to say to you, let this be your last Sabbath, that you come to church without a pen or a piece of paper and take notes while the sermon is going on. Somebody better say amen. amen. We ain't here just talking. We are here to share the word of God. So you take this down. The focus point is this. Being Christian. Be what? Being Christian requires a generous mind. Being Christian requires a generous mind. Say that with me. Being Christian requires a generous mind. God responds to generosity with generosity. Here's a fact check. Scarcity is repaid with scarcity. If you sow sparingly, the Bible says, you will reap sparingly. 2 Corinthians 9 and 6, but this I say, he who sows, so you won't think I'm making it up, but he who sows sparingly will also reap sparingly. But he who sows bountifully shall also reap bountifully. When we talk about how should we respond to God, perhaps we ought to confront that passage of scripture in the Old Testament in the 116th division of the Psalms and verse 12. There the psalmist says, what shall I render to the Lord for all his benefits towards me? May I pause and say to you that each and every one of you who are sitting under the sound of my voice are the recipients of the benefits of God in your life. You are a benefit recipient of the generosity, the graciousness, the love, the mercy, and the power of an all-loving God, the fact that you are here right now says that there's a generous God somewhere. The reason why I'm able to say that is because not near one of us deserves to be blessed by God. I want to bust your bubble right now. If you think you are good enough, righteous enough, Study up enough that you serve enough to receive the goodness of God. You are wrong, dead wrong. Even if we did everything we could, we still would owe God in relationship to all that he has given us and is blessing us with even right now, stop, pinch yourself, look at yourself, kind of just hold yourself and realize you are being blessed right now 
blessings are falling upon you. Mercy drops are falling all around us. There are showers of blessings, copious showers of blessings falling in this room right here and now. In fact, my brothers and sisters, we ought to be able to just come in here in this place, lift up our voices and declare what a mighty God we serve. I'm living, I'm moving, I'm breathing, I got sight in my eyes. God has been so good to me. In fact, he's been so good, I can't count all of his blessings. I don't even realize everything God has done for me, but here's one thing I know for sure. Every good and perfect gift comes from the Lord. I'm blessed. I'm blessed. I'm blessed. I'm blessed. When somebody asks you, how are you doing? All you've got to tell them is, I'm blessed. We are dealing with the stewardship of life. We have been given time, talent, treasure, temple. Time is life. Talent are the blessings or the gifts that you receive to do and be who and what you are. The temple is your body. We have not taken care of the temple as we should have, but God has blessed us with a temple, our treasure. If you ain't got but a dime in your pocket, if you're down to your last penny, you ought to praise God that you have a penny. Time, temple, talent, treasure. Here's the fifth one. Because he's been so good, we've got a story to tell. Time, talent, temple, treasure, and testimony. We have all that we need to give and to be generous. As we look at this scripture, there is a context, there's a backdrop that I want you to make sure that you're clear. First of all, the backdrop is this. Jesus has been teaching under the pharisaical scrutiny of the leaders of the church. They watched him as he walked with his disciples, plucked grain from a field on the Sabbath day. They were watching him as a man with a withered hand was in the temple on the Sabbath and needed to be healed. God, Jesus tells him, stand up, stretch forth your hand, and he heals the man. He leaves the temple under their scorn and under their scrutiny and under their anger and begins to call 12 disciples to follow him. He then names them each one. He heads back down to the village. He preaches and he teaches and there the Bible says that people came not only to hear him but to be healed and bless your soul when Jesus begins to heal the Bible says he healed everybody who was standing under the sound of his voice he gets here he gets here this is Luke's account of the sermon on the mount that was given in Matthew Luke now in John, I'm sorry, in Luke uh, uh, 6, the 27th chapter begins, uh, the 27th verse says, But I say to you who hear, love your enemies, do good to those who hate you. Love your who? Love your brothers. Love your sisters. Love your mother. Love your father. Na, 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 na. That suggests relationship and a relationship that is usually intact. Jesus takes us into an area where we will not go on our own. Jesus says, I don't want you to like your brothers and like your mothers and sisters, and I don't even want you just to like your enemies. Do not just put up with your enemies. Don't just tolerate 
your enemies. Don't just allow your enemies just to be around you. You don't say anything to them as long as they don't say anything to you. If I see them, I see them. If I don't, I don't. He says we are to love our enemies. First John 4 and 20 already tells us that this thing with God is tough. For he says, if you say you love God but hate your brother, you are a liar. For how can you say you love your brother or love God while you hate your brother whom you have seen and say you love God whom you have not seen. This is not talking about your enemies in First John. He's talking about church folk. How can you say you love God when you can't even get along with church folk? Now add to that. Add to that now. We've been called we have been called to love our enemies. I want to say to the Lord, Lord, now, 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 you pushing this thing. You taking me somewhere where I don't know if I can go. John Nolan says Jesus calls us to a practical love of enemies that is no mere sentiment but the active pursuance of the enemy's good. <sighs> you mean I got to look out for my enemy? You mean I've got to support my enemies? You mean that I've got to put in a good word for my enemy? You mean that if I can help them, I have to help them? Not just folk you don't know, but I'm talking about your enemies. For when Jesus say, says, but to you who hear, love your enemies, the you he's talking about is all y'all. Mm -hmm. You can't duck this one, Sister Rita Pierce. This one's aimed directly at all y'all and me too. Love your enemies. Here, here, here's, here's so you are clear on who your enemy is. The one who curses you. The one who spitefully they're just mean and nasty and honorary, low down dog, backbite. I'm gonna get real with this. This here, this here, backstabbers, those who are smiling in your face, but as soon as you turn your back, they're trying to tear you down when they could have said something nice about you. The same ones you've helped and you've helped, and you've helped, somebody go understand what I'm saying here today, and you've helped, they're the main ones who are tearing down your character. Who is the enemy? The one who strikes you on the cheek, the one who takes your cloak and won't give it back, the one who won't pay you back from the stuff you gave them and lent them, the ones who are just low down, daddy. Love him. Don't pay them back. <laughs> yeah. Don't pay them back with evil. To these, he says, we are to be generous. 
In other words, give them more than they would take. Give them more than what they would ask for. Give them more than they deserve. Give them more, angel, than what's fair. Give them more than they would give to you. Give it to them abundantly. Give them the good. Be kind, compassionate, merciful, non-judgmental, <laughs> non-condemning, and most of all, be forgiving. Okay, I need to say that again. Be forgiving. People who you ought to forgive are people who need to be forgiven, meaning they've done something that deserves or something that sets them up where forgiveness is an appropriate or necessary response. How? How am I to do this and be generous? He says, with good measure, press down, shaken together, and running over. And maybe you don't understand this. This imagery comes from the marketplace where people would buy corn or grain. The merchant who was selling the grain would have what was called the measure. Whatever that container was, it was the thing that would now set the amount for, for the grain that a person was getting ready to purchase. So as the grain now is being poured, the, the, the merchant would sit down with the, with the measure and he would pour into the measure. One writer says that the measure was not oftentimes determined by the merchant, but the measure was determined by the one who was receiving the grain. They came with their own measure too. You would then pour the grain in, pour it in, pour it in till you got almost to the top. Then you would press on it with your hands. Push the grain down. Push it down. Push it down till it wouldn't go any further. And once you pushed it down, then you would take the measure, shake it so that whatever pocket of space may have been still in the measure would now be filled up with the falling grain. When the level goes down, you are to get, grab more corn, more grain, pour it back in, bring it back up to the top. You would think maybe after all that packing down and shaking, it was enough. No, now you've got to pack it down some more, shake it some more, and fill it up some more. Not just to the top, but you to fill it up until the grain starts falling over outside of the measure. And when the Bible says it will fall in your lap, it often talked about this pocket or this part of the tunic that would be held out. And as the grain fell out of the measure, whatever fell in your pocket was yours too. Here's the key. You didn't pay any more for what you received. You paid the same price. Press down, shaking together, and running over. This is how we are to give to those who are opposing us and how we are to be generous in content and character on every level. The principle is simply this. The response of generosity is to be intentionally directed towards all. We are to be generous towards God and towards others. The others are those who have intended or have done us harm. God's generous response to us then is relative to our attitude, treatment, behavior, 
towards him and to others. You can't just be generous to God and think you're off the hook. We must be generous to God and generous to one another, which also includes our enemies. D.L. Box says, in sum, the standard one uses in relation to others is the standard that God will use when he applies his grace and his mercy towards you. For with the same measure, verse 38 says, that you use, it will be measured back to you. We must give out of a generous mind, out of a generous mindset. The principle stands clearly to us because we are the recipients of God's generosity. Romans 5 says, verse 7, for scarcely for a righteous man will one die, yet perhaps for a good man someone would dare to die. But God demonstrates his own love, his own generosity towards us that in while we were still sinners, Christ died for us. What the Paul is simply saying is that Christ himself was generous to the enemies of the kingdom of God. Let me make it clear. Sinners are enemies of God. He died generously for sinners. We don't deserve God's generosity. For Romans 6 and 23 says the wages of sin is death, but the gift of God is eternal life through Jesus Christ or Christ Jesus our Lord. We are to give out of an abundance a heart of generosity. How do we do that? We apply this physically. Physically, blessings come when we exercise a generous mind. We give when we forgive. We give when we esteem. We give when we lend. We give when we are kind and merciful. You will be given to as you give of yourself. Someone might ask the question, I get it, I get it, generous, generous, generous. How much is generous? Reminds me of when we were in a workers' meeting, and one of the sons of DuPont by the name of Noah Washington, y'all might know him. We were sitting in this meeting. Someone was presenting a, 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 a ministry tool. And this ministry, too, had a price tag on it. So as they were telling us about this ministry, too, out of the back of the crowd, this son of DuPont started calling out, how much? The person kept talking, kept trying to sell, and, and the voice from the son of DuPont said, how much? few more minutes, he began to unfold even more of the benefits of this too. And the son of DuPont cried out again, but how much? And when the price was told, that same son of DuPont said, too much, too much. How often? I had to tell that about you, baby boy. I'm sorry. I, I, how often? How often? When it comes to God and he says to us that I need you and I require you to be generous, to be open-hearted, to be open-handed, that perhaps like the son of DuPont Park, we are standing somewhere around and saying to an almighty God, how much, how much? And when God says, I want your all, some of us sadly declare, too much. I tell you that no matter what God asks of me, it'll never be 
too much. He gives in abundance, and I want to be generous to him. The greatest object lesson of this, this abundance came to me when I didn't go to the arches. I didn't visit the king. I didn't go by that little redhead girl. But I went to that place where these, these, these five guys hang out. <clears throat> They're always there. There are five of them. I don't care where you go. I don't know how they do it. But, 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 but Freeman, these five guys are standing right there. When I go up to the counter, they've got these beautiful russet out of whole potatoes. They cut them, they cut them, Cynthia, with the skin still on them. Drown them down in that, in that bubbling grease. And I, and I see the seasoning on them. And no matter what size you ask for, you can get a little fry, a regular fry, or a large fry. What I love about this place where those five guys hang out is that they'll grab your container, no matter what size. Grab the scoop, fill up the scoop, drop it down in your container, and then they'll kind of push it down. And then they'll go down again and get some more, and, and, they, and, they, and then they'll push it on top, and the, and the fries start falling over. That's enough. That's good enough for me. I love it. But here's what happens at the place where the five guys hang out. They get the brown paper bag. Hey, 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 hey. I'm an old South Side boy. I, I know about that brown paper bag. They pop that bag. Put your container inside. Bless your soul. They scoop up some more and drop them in the paper bag. And they put some more. So you not only have what's in the container, you've got what's in the bag. That sounds like good measure, pressed down, shaking together, and running over. My brothers and sisters, we receive the same kind of shaking down, good measure, run it over when it comes to grace. Romans 5 and 20 says, moreover, moreover, the law entered that the offense might abound. But where? Sin abounded. <laughs> Grace, 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 much more abounded. When it comes to grace, I'm closing now. When it comes to grace, we are pressed down, shaken together, and running over. How do I know? Because I should have been dead, buried in my grave. I shouldn't be up here preaching the gospel of the good news. I don't deserve anything that God has given me. But grace in good measure, pressed down, shaken together, and running over comes to me every time I go to my father in prayer. Oh, Lord, have mercy on me. And every time I go, he wipes my burdens away. Every time I go, he cleanses me from all righteousness. Every time I go, he fixes what's broken. And I go over and over and over and over again. He's good measure, pressed down, shaken together, and running over. It matters not what you've done, where there is sin. More grace, more grace, more grace than you could ever need. He's been generous. He's been generous with saving me. Mm. He 
he's been generous saving you. So what is it that God could ask of you? That in the words of that son of DuPont would be too much. I don't, if, I don't care if the Lord asked me for my last dime. If he asked me for my dying breath, you can't be. God give it. No banner. How hard you try. And if you want to know how to treat your enemies, and if there's a question in your mind, perhaps you haven't visited the cross lately. Because we're told that one of the first things Jesus said from the cross while he hung in agony and shame Father forgive them they don't know what they're doing You may have had some folk mess over you. But nobody has messed over you like the enemies of Jesus messed over him. And he said, forget them. It's not worth holding a grudge. that's hurt more. You're the one held in captivity. And I'm not saying they don't deserve it. They don't. Or they don't, that they deserve your forgiveness. They don't. Neither do we. The wages of sin is death. But the gift of God is eternal life through Jesus Christ, our Lord. So in the same way you have been given, given we are to release others generously, good measure, pressed down, Shaken together and running over. Can I tell you a secret? You can't do it on your own. <laughs> you, you can't do it. Timothy, you can't do it. Brother, Sister Black, you, 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 you can't do it on your own. Jesus takes control of our hearts. Somehow. Somehow. Brother Clarence, somehow. Brother Clarence, somehow. We're able. to love our enemies and possess the generous mind. You know that? I know why? Because Paul said in Philippians, let this mind be in you, which is also in Christ Jesus. It's not your mind. It's the mind of Christ. So in short, that's just, just what I'm asking you to do. It's what Christ is asking us to do. 
is to allow his mind to become our mind. Grace, God, grace that is greater than all our sin. Why don't you stand with me if you want to have the mind of Christ? Grace, grace, come. Grace will pardon and cleanse within. those of you who like me know <clears throat> this is a grand and noble idea but I can't do it I've tried what I'm good at is getting back at folk hmm? I'm good at that <clears throat> but this forgiveness and letting go and being generous not only to God and to my fellow man but my enemies that, hey 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 Church, hey, church, hey. So if you're like me and you need God's help and you want God's help, I'm going to ask you to be bold enough to slip out your pew and come on down because I'm going to ask God to give us what we need to have his mind. If you're like me, be like me, so I'm going to be praying for me first. That's who I'm going to be praying for. Praying for me first. Mm. Pardon and cleanse within grace. Grace. This applies to some of you who had some dark shadows in your history. Neglect or abuse from your parents. Perhaps you were bullied in your childhood. Perhaps there's someone who was in your life that you were romantically involved with. They broke your heart. They betrayed you. Perhaps you were married. Hmm. And trust was broken. You're a divorcee. And you've been carrying this stuff for years. You know what it is. It's been blocking you from receiving the gifts that God wants to give you. Can I tell you this plainly? That if we fail to do what God is encouraging us to do, we block him. Do you all hear me? There are blessings he wants to give you. He wants to set you free. But we refuse to allow him to bless because we hold on. Now, when, I, when I'm talking, I'm not just talking to you, I'm talking to me. So I plead with you, I plead with you. 
let it go. Surrender. Give it to God right here, right now. Don't leave here with that stuff still on your back and in your heart. He'll take it away. My last appeal is this. The devil wants to make sure you feel shamed. <laughs> Unworthy. Helpless and hopeless. Did I not tell you today about that amazing, generous grace? That grace is for you. No matter what you've gone through, no matter what you've done, no matter who you are, that grace is for you. I wish I would go to the, go to the, the counter and somebody tells me this is mine. Even though I didn't pay for it, this is mine. It got your name on it. And I'm going to let somebody block me from getting my stuff? We about to have a misunderstanding. Grace has been provided for you. Claim it. Let him release you. Let him free you. Let him make you whole. That's you here today. You're here, and that is you. Simply lift your hand right where you are. Lord, I, I, I want to be set free. God bless you. God bless you. Lord, I want to be set free. If you've never given your life to Jesus Christ before, now is the time to do it. Just lift your hand right where you are. Lord, I want to be free. I want that grace. And cleanse within it's grace, grace of There's your assurance right there. It's God's grace, not my grace, not Brunson's grace, not Lamont's grace, not Castillo's grace. It's God's grace. Come on, say it. Oh, grace, oh, grace. <laughs> Here's what I do. Grace that will pardon, woe and cleanse. I know it's grace. Thank you, Lord, for being a generous God. Forgiving us, forgiving us in spite of us. Making a way out of no way. You cover us and bless us every day. There are times, Lord, we've got to be honest, where we don't even give you the time of day. But your mercy endures forever. Thank you. And Lord, when we consider on the backdrop of what you're asking us to be and to do, on the backdrop of who you are and what you've done, Oh, it's easy, it's easy, it's easy. There's nothing too hard. There's nothing that's too much for us to do for you. We can't do it on our own. <laughs> our flesh, our minds won't, won't, they can't handle it. So we need a mind transplant. That will be 
the transformation of our minds and our spirits. Give us generous minds and hearts towards you, each other, and yes, even our enemies. See us here at the altar, Lord. We, we admit it. We need you. See us here as we stand and sit across this room, Lord. We admit it. We need you. Please. And for that person, Lord, today who may have said, yes, I want to follow you every step of the way. Oh, God, seal them. If they are here and they fail to say yes, Lord, have mercy on them. Don't let them leave this place before they say, what must I do to be saved? And Lord, keep us until that day when you usher us into your eternal generosity in the earth made new. May that be our miracle. Without the loss of one, I pray, in the name of the Father, in the name of the Son, and in the name of the Holy Spirit, let all of those with a generous mind say amen, amen, and amen. God bless you. God bless you. us to be generous. Let us stand for the benediction. And to answer your question at the beginning of the service, we know now that it was indeed good to have been in the house of the Lord today. Amen. Please bow your heads. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine upon you and be gracious unto you. The Lord return, the Lord turn his face towards you and give you peace until we meet again. Amen. God bless you. You are dismissed. <laughs>